Seattle, Washington. It's the Fresca U.S. National Cycling Championships, part of the Olympic Showcase here on Prime. The Westlake Center in the heart of downtown Seattle plays host to the Fresca National Cycling Championships for the first time in 17 years. Hello, everybody. I'm Brian Drever, and welcome to the show. We're going to have a lot of terrific action for you here in both men and women's competitions. We're going to be starting it off with the men's road race. That is really the featured event. The Microsoft Grand Prix is part of a whole week of festivities here. And working with me on the men's side of the race is a former national and world champion of cycling, Mike McCarthy. Mike, you've been around the race course. It's a tough one. What do you think? Well, Brian, I think the key word today is survival. This is one of the hardest national championship courses I've ever seen in my 13 years of competitive cycling. And I think these guys are just going to have a day trying to stay upright on the bikes and in some of the tight turns and to try to get up that hill 12 times. Two very tough climbs, but it's also going to be some very fast downhill finishing. And if it's a small group at the end, as we probably suspect, it's going to take fast legs to get here, too. Well, I think the group is just going to shatter uh, before halfway even in the race. Um, you know, we have the element of the pros and the amateurs in the bike race today. Uh, I think some of the pro guys will be trying to help the amateurs as the first amateur across the line is going to be the national champion. And it should make for a pretty exciting tactical race. We'll be looking forward to that men's competition. We also will have women's racing. We'll be showing you some highlights for the short course Criterium Championships as well as the road race. And working with me on the women's side is Leslie Shank. Leslie, our cycling expert here, you've also been around the course and you've looked at some of the favorites. Who are we liking in the women's race? Well, we certainly have Jeannie Golay, who is 1992 Olympian and 1992 road champion. She's a great climber, a great versatile rider, and, and really sprinting well. Won a lot of races in Europe this year in field sprints. So she likes the downhill sprint that we have here today, and I think she's going to be a contender. We also have some of the other great riders with the United States, Eve Stevenson, Dee Dee Demet, Allison Dunlop, who's coming off a separated shoulder, but another great sprinter. So we'll see how this race shapes up. Terrific parity in the field here on both the men and women's side of the competition. And we'll get started with the Microsoft Grand Prix, the feature event of the Fresca National Cycling Championships in just a couple of minutes. The Fresca U.S. National Cycling Championships are brought to you in part by EDS, business and technology partner of U.S. Cycling by Microsoft, proud sponsor of the Microsoft Grand Prix. And by Fresca, the official soft drink of the U.S. cycling team. Welcome back to the Fresca National Cycling Championships on Prime. Brian Drebber along with Mike McCarthy. Some of the riders being introduced as we get set to get underway with this 102-mile race. A beautiful, bright, sunny picture postcard day here in Seattle. Considering what the weather could be, it's really great. Here's Jamie Carney, current leader in the Corbell Cup Series. Crashed last week in New Jersey. He's injured. And Tyler Hamilton, one of the top U.S. amateurs here. He was a great finisher in the Tour DuPont on the U.S. amateur team, along with Chan McRae, boyhood friend of world champion Lance Armstrong also lives in Austin. Here's one of the pros, Jeff Pierce, the captain of the Chevrolet LA Sheriff team and an odds-on favorite to win today. The Criterium winner from two days ago. This is Trent Klasna, who won the short course race. And Bart Bowen, another one of the real favorites, a terrific climber, a member of the Saturn racing team. And as the gun fires, these guys are off for 12 laps on an eight and a half mile course, a total of 102 miles of racing. The Microsoft Grand Prix featured event of the Fresca National Championships. That's right, Brian. The first obstacle these guys are going to face after they cruise down 2nd Avenue here is the climb up Yesler. It's a 12 to 15 percent climb that lasts just about 1,000 meters, and then some rolling hills. Uh, the rollers should string things out later on in the race, and, and a couple of the tricky descents after the climb. Here's a look at the course going from downtown over to the shore of Lake Washington through the Leshy and Madrona areas. And the climb comes on the part that connects the two. There's also a king of the mountain climb, two very tough hills. Yeah, well, yesterday riding to the Criterium, or actually two days ago, I rode up this Yesler climb twice. And let me tell you, it's a leg breaker. I, I, I wouldn't pay a, a million bucks to be anywhere but in this truck with you today, Brian. Well, here they are on that Yesler climb. And you can see by the very slow leg cadence and everybody out of the saddle that this is no stroll in the park. And they'll have to do this one 12 times. That's the bad news. The good news is they get to go back down the same road in the opposite direction with the lake up front. 
Well, ordinarily in a race of this length, you wouldn't see too many of the favorites up front at the start of the race. But I think today these guys are going to be a little nervous about some of the descents and not want to get too far back behind the back markers, especially since there's not a whole lot of time to recover on this course. Trent Klasner is really, uh, I think, more in this for the sprint competition than anything else today. Uh, but you look over his shoulder and there's Bart Bowen and Steve Speaks, two of the more experienced riders. Bart's former professional champion of the U.S. and Steve Speaks is very well-seasoned international rider. So you can tell these guys are racing right from the start. Klasner, we saw a lot of him in the Criterium. He was first across the line and he's animating this race already here today. And there's Steve Speaks, the veteran rider. A long career. He won the longest one-day race in the history of racing in the United States, the uh, Spinco 500-mile race, and did that all by himself. He now leads a group up the tail end of that Yesler climb. I think we have to look at a couple of different races going on here today, too. There's the pros riding with the amateurs, although it's really the first amateur across the line that we're looking for today. He'll be crowned the national champion. Uh, by the, by the time 1996 comes around, it's going to be one race, but they still have a separate championship for pros. Speaks is a pro and Bowen's a pro, but a teammate of Bowen's, Kevin Livingston, is an amateur, and I think you'll see Bart and his teammate Scott Mercier working pretty hard for Kevin today. Tim Petty, the winner of the 1992 Olympic Trials and a member of that team that competed in Barcelona, leads another very strong group. In fact, virtually the entire field has come back together at this point in the race now. As we uh, take a look at the whole field, all the way back, 175 riders. Well, it would have been 176 if my partner, Mike McCarthy, had competed. <laughs> He's taken part, and we're happy that he is here in the booth, giving us a great look inside the field that he races with every day. Here is a very tricky, tough descent, Mike. You rode this, and those seams in the road are probably the worst part of it. The seams in the road and the turns are off camera, and it's a hard, concrete, bumpy surface. Now, I came around this. Uh, th there's a left-hander right after this right that I came around the other day riding to the Criterium, and just about went over the edge. It's very tricky and very deceptive, and uh, I, I'd be careful there if I were some of these riders. A lot of them tiptoeing around that turn. It looks like the fans have been out painting names on the road, a kind of European tradition being taken up by the fans of cycling in this great cycling town, Seattle, Washington. The second climb on the race course is for the King of the Mountain competition, and that is sponsored by Sports Pep, their pocket rocket product. And this is where there is money awarded on each of the laps during the course of the race. Scott McKinley, who was third in the Criterium Championship, and everybody was watching him in that short course race. I don't think he'll be as much of a factor in this longer event. Probably not, but like we talked about a little earlier, there are a couple of different races going on today. The King of the Mountain, the Pocket Rocket King of the, King of the Mountain, is certainly uh, you know, something for a lot of the riders who may not have a chance to win the overall race here, uh, a prize for them to go for during the day. So watch for some of the smaller riders, maybe the guys that don't have as much of a chance to really go for it for the King of the Mountain and the sprint competition that happens here at the finish line. Another good look at Steve Speaks in the Guiltless Gourmet outfit. Just ahead of him was Jim Fryer. And here's Chan McRae riding in the Stars and Stripes of the U.S. national team. Now, we spoke with Chris Carmichael, the national team director, a few days ago, and he said that both Chan and Kevin Livingston just came off great European tours. So look for those guys to be there at the finish today. And here's Trent Klasna again. He's been in every move throughout the early part of this race and certainly seems to be uh, intent on taking that points competition at the finish line, the sprint competition sponsored by Evian. My old buddy duking it out in the junior races, Scott McKinley there, giving a little look to the camera. I don't think Scott's going to be a real big factor by the end of the bike race, and he was kind of laughing about how many laps he was going to do in the race. In fact, we almost made a bet, and I said three, and he said maybe a couple more than that, but I think it'll... And up at the top of the King of the Mountain climb, they make a right turn here at Catfish Corner. The racing action continues here as the Fresca National Championships goes on. On Prime, when we come back, we'll have highlights and action from the women's criterion. Don't go anywhere, folks. We've got some great racing coming up. You're watching the Fresca U.S. National Cycling Championships on Prime Sports Northwest. Olympics the Thunder Bar Criterium, the short course championship for the United States, part of the Fresca National Cycling Championships, was held in Seward Park on a closed course. And the hometown girl and the favorite, five-time world champion Rebecca Twig, who was born in the nearby area and started her cycling career right here. Another favorite, Laura Sharamita, and she is the defending Criterium National Champion, a tremendous rider. Karen Bliss, a very strong track rider, a champion on the racetrack, velodromes, as well as a two-time Criterium National Champion champion could be looking for title number three and julie young another one of the favorites very fast a speedy rider for team saturn 
a lot of the riders in this race tremendous ability and it's going to be a very short race 50 laps around this race course only about six tenths of a mile per lap and it's on a tilt it does have kind of a long struggling climb in it leslie shank and it's not a true criterion some of the riders wishing more for that classic four corner flat course well, I spoke with Karen Bliss and a few of the other riders prior to the start, with some of the pure Criterium speedsters, and they were a little frustrated with the up and down in the course. It really isn't a true Criterium of being totally flat, but I think you're still going to have uh, the this, this real speedsters and the sprinters in the front here. Early in the race, Rebecca Twig riding at the back of the field. We have seen her employ this tactic over the years, and a lot of it comes from a very bad crash that she took in the first half of her career. She laid out then for a couple of years and has made a comeback to win a world championship and an Olympic medal. You see Allison Dunlap there. There's a small break of riders here. Allison Dunlap with the Timex team. She does have a separated shoulder from racing in Europe, a bad crash there, but she seems to be strong. Maureen Kayla from California, very, very powerful rider. She can certainly power this breakaway. Maybe they'll stay away. The crowd enjoyed beautiful weather early in the day for these Criterium Championships held a couple of days ago in Seward Park. The field of riders stayed pretty much together for the whole race. Jessica Greco, another outstanding former track rider who's made the transition to the road, puts on an early move that's countered by one of the riders from the Timex team. And again, that's Allison Dunlap. She's very, very smooth on the bike and doesn't seem to be affected at all by that separated shoulder. A lull in the action, however, towards the end of the race as the riders begin realizing that no one was going to get away in this competition, at least no one had been able to do it successfully. Rebecca Twig continued to ride at the back and here is a good look at Karen Bliss Livingston of the world team and one of the U.S. national team riders right behind her. That is the very stylish Dee Stevenson. And Julie Young, who is also known for her powerful sprint, and she certainly is a contender in the race here in the criteria. Very difficult to get a handle on just who would be the favorites in this race. Because of the hill and the climbing in it, it wasn't a true criterion course. And some of the stronger, more road-oriented riders certainly played a factor in this competition. The hill seemed to shape the course up. This is the riders up just a little bit as they came to the top of that climb before they descended on and down the finish. But it looks to me like an animal. And the field going there slowly through the only real corner on the course. So it was almost a hairpin turn and taken at near dead stop. Rebecca Twig still riding at the back of the field because, well, she can ride right to the front anytime she wants to. She is by far the class of the competition in women's racing, and everyone watches Rebecca Twig. Attack by Eve Stevenson there, very strong attack. Twig's teammate, Louisa Jenkins, was right at the front, and there are some chasers there. Julie Young is chasing down Eve Stevenson. There's a nice gap. This is on the very fast descent part of the course, better than 40 miles an hour in the biggest gear on the bike. Deep Stevenson leading an attack here late in the race. Eve is known for her time trialing abilities and uh, she... As Eve Stevenson continued to ride on the front like this, showing the style that she is famous for, she's quickly caught by the rest in a counterattack from her own teammate, Dee Dee Demet, the youngster. Dee is really going for it here. She's got the pedal to the metal right into that turn, and uh, maybe that counterattack will take some of the other riders by surprise. But as it turned out, all together at the end of the race, and late in the race, Rebecca Twig finally moved to the front as everyone expected that she would. But when she goes to the front, they all watch her like a hawk. And even Rebecca Twig was not able to get away and win alone, which is what she would have tried to do. So with one lap to go, the field came back together and all of the riders began looking around. The cat and mouse game and the race falls into the hands of the sprinters. And in the wild dash to the line, it's Karen Bliss Livingston who takes the inside line and no one is able to try to get her wheel. And, and as she powers her way to the line in the back of the field, there's a crash, a spill, and Rebecca Twig caught behind the crash. Any hopes that she had of winning this race are dashed. But in the dash for the line, Karen Bliss Livingston, who had led the sprint out from the bottom of the hill, is able to take the straight shot. Karen Dunn, the runner-up, picked the wrong side to try to pass on, and Karen Bliss Livingston takes the title in the Thunder Bar Criterium. And here's Karen Bliss sprinting straight, right for the line. Karen Dunn tries to come around her on the inside, had to take her hand off the bar and touch Karen Bliss. Karen Dunn is a younger rider. She's the 1994 National Collegiate Criterium Champion.
Great sprinter, but a little less seasoned than the, the six-time national champion, Karen Bliss. So Karen Bliss beat her to the line. Here comes Jeff. And here she congratulates Brooke Blackwelder, the third-place finisher in the National Criterium Championships. Fourth place finish was Susan Yetton, and fifth place went to Julie Young. But the championship, the gold medal, and another Stars and Stripes jersey goes on the back of Karen Bliss Livingston. A tremendous race, this Criterium National Championship. And here are the results, and there you see all award at the same time, an hour and 35 minutes for 50 laps on that six-tenths of a mile course. Karen Dunn, Brooke Blackwell, rounding out the medals. And we'll be back right after this with the men's criterium. Don't go anywhere. It's getting a lot of fun right here at the Fresca National Championships. I guess I'm not doing it back here. He's not there. <laughs> The Thunder Bar Criterium for men, 65 laps around the same course contested by the women under threatening skies. Weather getting a little bit chilly. And here's 40-year-old Kent Bostick, silver medalist in the time trial competition held earlier this week. One of the favorites in this race. Well, I'm not so sure about that. And the whole starting field. Hey, who's this masked man? My partner Mike McCarthy on the starting line for the Criterium Championship. And ready to get the gun, the whole field of riders, 80 of them who had qualified in two heats earlier that same day. Well, I think my expression says a lot there, Brian. It's sort of a play day for me out there. Um, you know, the, the, the course wasn't particularly challenging. There was one small climb that went up towards the finish line, which actually wound up playing a major role in the race. And uh, as far as technical skills, there, there's just one real sweeping turn that's, that's fast in the race and the little hairpin at the top. So it's not really a traditional criterion course, uh, but there was some selection that happened. A lot of early moves in the race. The most significant one, this four-man break, containing Clark Sheehan, number 23, number 56, the local favorite, Paul Dalke in the orange jersey there. Number 93, you'll see him as Jonathan Heideman, number 199, Jason McCartney. These guys stayed away for quite a while, despite very hard efforts in the field to bring them back. They sure did. And, and to be honest with you, the only rider I really know up there is Clark Sheehan. Uh, Clark and I were roommates at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs for a couple of years, and we rode the World Championships in 1986 in the team time trial together. So Clark really has the ability, once he's out there, to stay out there. Now, the conditions really did favor the breakaway because it was slightly windy and there was a bit of moisture on the road after that rain started coming down. So I really thought this break was going to go. I think the laws have been waived in our favor for this Criterium National Championship. They do have weekly races here in Seattle, Washington, at Seward Park, and a lot of the riders in this Criterium National Championships have a lot of experience on this race course. One of them, of course, Paul Dalkey, and the local crowd was going wild because they sensed a victory for a hometown boy. Well, let me tell you, for the three other guys in that break, it was nothing but a blessing to have a local guy in there because it's nothing better than having you know, the local crowd on your side up there, and it's, it really does a lot to spark the break. But the field was not deterred, let me tell you that much. It got real fast out there, and with seven to go, those guys were just closing in. The field did indeed begin to hunger after the breakaway, closing in on the last laps. Jonathan Heideman, one of the survivors from the breakaway. There's another look at Clark Sheehan out there, driving this one forward. Here is the man, uh, number 199, Jason McCartney from Iowa City, Iowa, and finally Dalkey. Well, Fighting for Olympic sports, the local favorite. But the time gap was coming down at this point in the race. The chase was on back in the field. Team Saturn doing a lot of activity back there. Yeah, they, sh they sure were. And, and, you know, sitting in the back of this race, you're sitting back there wondering who can go that fast at the front of the field to bring a break like this back. But let me tell you, it came back, and it came back fast. Here's the climb, the hairpin turn that they had to make, slowing down to probably 15 miles an hour at this point. Smoothly and nicely through the turn, in spite of the somewhat slippery conditions at four laps to go, the lead is almost cut in half. Well, when there's a lot of money and a national championship jersey on the line, it gets real tough back in the field when the guy sense the victory is going up the road. So the field made a great effort. And here, indeed, the field begins to close in. There, Dalkey, the last one to give up. And, of course, the crowd sensing some disappointment here because, well, now their man Dalkey and any of the other local favorites are going to be in a big lottery. A crapshoot with four laps to go. There's Dalkey still trying to hang out there in spite of the field coming up from behind. Disappointment, but also a lot of excitement because I really think, Brian, that there's nothing more exciting in bike racing than the field sprint at the end of a criterium. I mean, coming up that hill, guys are still going close to 40 miles an hour, and, I mean, it's, it's really a spectacle. So on the final climb, Scott McKinley of the Coors Light Racing Team, who everyone had been looking at all day long. Every time he moved, it was like an alarm bell went off. And with about 400 yards to go, McKinley leads it out, coming up the wet climb. Scott, he's a super fast sprinter, and he's really known for his long sprint. But today, he just went a little bit long. Clatham took that Cadillac ride and crossed the line with his arms in the air. 
And in fact, he was not able to hold on for the victory. Instead, it went to Trent Klasna, who came up, and Esteban Fraga of Team Shackley also got by the speedy Scott McKinley. You can see the disappointment on his face as he looks over and sees two guys coming by. And you can also see a little crash back there in the field, which I'm sure got in a few riders' ways, but that's the nature of the sport sometimes. Trent Klasna well, takes the victory, the highest placed amateur. I was definitely worried about that break. I, I actually thought I had a teammate in there, and I uh, wasn't doing too much work. I was going to just sit on things. And uh, when they got caught, I learned that I didn't have a teammate. I was uh, uh, pretty lucky that I didn't work, you know, but I should have been. Tell me about the sprint. Uh, well, it was pretty scary, you know, it was in the corner in the rain and everything. And uh, it started with about 400 meters to go, it seemed like. And I was in about uh, sixth place coming up the hill. And McKinley had a little gap, and everybody was sprinting with about 200 meters to go, and I was out in the wind, and I, 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 I was sprinting, and I felt, I said, I, I think I can get McKinley, I think I can get him. All of a sudden, I was getting him, all of a sudden, I was passing him, I couldn't believe it. And I was just, this is the first one in the season, and uh, really happy. Oh. A very happy Trent Klasna takes the victory ahead of two additional pros, Fraga and McKinley, top-placed amateur Leif Harnden. Talk about a happy guy. Well, I'm just going to call my mom first, let her know what happened, and then well, I don't know what to think after that. I've, I've been bummed out in uh, national championships ever since I was a junior, you know, in the mid-80s. I knew I could win all this time, and then you know, I didn't even do national championships last year because I was in Belgium, but... Oh, I just can't believe it, man. Miracles can happen. <laughs> Enjoy it. Thanks. Rise bike rider, Brian. Things will be decidedly different for Leif Harnden of Team Redlands out of Crestline, California. And next up, we're coming back with more action from the road race. Welcome back to Seattle, Washington, the Fresca National Cycling Championships. Brian Drebber, Leslie Shank, and Mike McCarthy looking on as the men's road race continues here. On the descent, going back into downtown, they have come back from the King of the Mountain, and they are on the downhill section that they had to climb on the way out on the race course. And here they head down into the tall buildings. Mike and four guys out here uh, working pretty hard, trying to get something going. Well, yeah, Brian, and they just came off a 60-mile-an-hour descent into that hairpin turn, so that's a pretty tough section right there. Um, you can see they're working well together. There's a Saturn rider and a Shackley rider up there, so that's Trent Klasner right there. He won the Criterium the other night. So uh, it's a pretty good-looking group, but it's still pretty early on in the race here. That's Klasna at the back right now, number 200, the Criterium champion. Peter Steubenrock of Team Shackley, just ahead of him, number 141. One of the Saturn team riders is there with him as well, and it looks as though the green and yellow jersey of one of the Chevrolet LA Sheriffs, and that would have to be Jeff Pierce, most likely. Right, and if I'm not mistaken, that's Bart Bowen, and I think Bart's going to be doing a lot of work today for his teammate, uh, Kevin Livingston. Bart and Jeff Pierce, both professionals. Steubenrock, also a professional. And here comes a couple more riders up. So the dangerous move by Jeff Pierce and by Bart Bowen draws the attention of Chan McRae and the stars and stripes of the U.S. national team, as well as a couple of other riders. Yeah, his teammate Scott Mercer is right on his wheel there. And Scott and Chan just got back from a race in Europe, the Tour of Austria, where they rode real well as a team. And, and Chris Carmichael, the national team coach, said those guys were something in the mountains. So let's see what they can pull off today. Another good look at Bart Bowen there, a former U.S. professional national champion, won the won the professional equivalent of this race in Philadelphia a couple of years ago with a brilliant solo victory. Of course, last year that same race was won by Lance Armstrong. And this year, Sean Yates won the title in Philadelphia with Steve Haig taking credit for being the U.S. national champion, and he finished fifth. This race, Mike, not unlike that. We've got professionals in the race, but it'll be the first amateur who will be declared the U.S. national amateur champion. That's right. And, you know, in all honesty, this is a pretty high-powered group up there. But if you look at the way Bowen's riding and some of the other riders, they're riding more as monitors than anything else. They don't really want to make this, make the commitment to this group and to this breakaway right now. I think they want to sit and wait a little while longer because this race, when you get into the 80, 90-mile range, is really going to be a whole different bike race. Scott McKinley of Coors Light making a move to get out of the main field and up to the breakaway alongside some of his professional partners, guys that he normally races with during the course of the season. I think it, it looks to me, too, like Scotty's pretty happy just to get the Coors Light name announced a few times through the start-finish line there. I don't think he's really out there trying to do battle with everyone up this hill 12 times, but he's giving it a good go. Well, like Jeff Pierce, he's here without teammates. Scott McKinley, the only member of the Coors Light racing team, they normally come in force to races, but Scott elected to come here on his own, as did Jeff Pierce and the Chevrolet LA Sheriff team. The rest of the squad is racing elsewhere. Now, here's McKinley trying to get across the gap on the Vessler Street climb. Yesler Street, sorry. You can see him have a little trouble with his gears there. It really shows the severity of this climb. I mean, this is a climb that, that guys are, you know, in their granny gears going up here, and it's it's almost the equivalent to the Manny Young Wall in Philadelphia in the U.S. Pro Race. 
Scott McKinley continuing to try to work his way up to the seven man breakaway that's ahead of him. And there they are, tantalizingly close, right at the top of this climb on Yesler. Now, he, here's a shot of the front group, and you see how much smoother these guys look than some of the guys back in the field. I mean, Trent Klasna, although he's a criterium rider and a fast sprinter, he looks really smooth at the front there, and, and that almost surprises me. Um, that that, that it's, it seems sort of effortless for him to sit at the front of this group and sort of control the tempo like that. You see Bowen sitting on his wheel real comfortable as well, so I don't think these guys have made the commitment yet. And here's a group of riders struggling off the back, some of the fellows who are not having the best day of their careers. One of them was one of the real animators back here, number 56, Paul Dalka. Uh, he was one of the guys that was in a breakaway in the Criterium Championship, and well, today is not working out quite as well for him. He's a big guy, and hauling himself up this hill is not the way he had planned on spending his day, even though he's in front of his hometown crowd. Right here we see Zach Conrad. He's a, he's a Colorado rider, real good road rider, and uh, I think he's gonna make a little show out of things right now. You see him at the top of the downhill. Let's watch him through these corners because this is a real hairy section of the course again. Hang on there, Zach. A couple more turns. This is a very, very fast ascending part of the road. And as you said earlier, Mike, there's those ruts in there that make it very difficult. You've got to avoid them. This is the turn I think you were talking about that you had some trouble yeah, with coming up. Yeah, this lefty right here is real tricky. And you'll see him accelerate out of it. And it's a real, real steep section. And he'll be pretty hard on the binders coming into this left-hand turn at the bottom. Zach Conrad making his way around the race course here in Seattle. The Fresca U.S. National Cycling Championships continuing. It's still early in the race action. And one by one, the riders are trying to get up and join the breakaway riders. This is one of the few sections of rest on the course. And uh, you, you can see Zach's trying to get a little bit of his legs back, sort of soft pedaling through these turns and, and letting the bike do a lot of the work through these corners. But it's actually a real fun course out there. It's just, uh, I guess it's a little more fun if you have the good legs on. Zach Conrad doing a good job here all by himself. At least he doesn't have to contend with traffic, and it appears as though he is about to catch the lead group. And we will continue looking at the men's road race. But first, we're going to come back right after these commercial messages with action from the women's road race. Join us, won't you? Welcome back, everybody. You're looking down on the start of the women's race. 51 miles, six laps around this course, eight and a half miles each, 800 vertical feet of climbing per lap. And I'm joined here in the booth now by Leslie Schenk, a two-time world championship medalist. Leslie, some of your teammates out there racing in this one. Jeannie Golay, I think she won a medal with you a few years ago. That's right, she did. And she's certainly going to be a contender here today. Jeannie's one of the ones that fired right out of the front of the field here. A large field of women riders, a very picturesque and beautiful course. There's the King Dome in the background where Ken Griffey whacks a few home runs every now and then. And we're looking at Jeannie Golay here. She'll be easy to spot in the Saturn colors with those graphite composite wheels. And Jeannie is just rolling those wheels easily up the first climb of the first lap. I think the riders are going to look at, at this as kind of a warm-up lap. They know this is going to be a race of attrition, and I think they're just going to test the course on this first lap, and then they'll kind of get into it in a few laps from now. In the background there, number 17, is Karen Couric of the Killer Loop team out of Cupertino, California, and also Allison Dunlap in the background. But Jeannie Golay, prominent in this race and riding at the front, I think a lot of the others probably watching her and expecting that she'll be the one to make the race. There's Dee Dee Demet, who will also be a contender in this race. She's been climbing very well, second in the Liberty Classic in Philadelphia last weekend, and uh, won the Queen of the Mountain there. So uh, her teammate Eve Stevenson, uh, world champion, and also will be a contender in today's hilly race. In the background, number 40, Carmen Richardson, just getting a look at some of the contenders in this race. Obviously, the ones riding up front on this very, very steep hill are the ones that will be reckoned with during the course of this six-lap event. They have two very long climbs to work. And here's Rebecca Twig, the Seattle native, 31 years of age, had a very disappointing performance in the criterium, however. marks a homecoming for the reigning queen of American cycling. Rebecca Twig, a student here at the University of Washington at age 14, she also burst onto the cycling scene at that same tender age. The term prodigy has never had more meaning than it's used to describe the young Seattle native who was actually born in Hawaii. Her rise to the top was nothing short of spectacular. My first year racing was actually here in 77 uh, in Seattle. Uh, the same summer that I started at uh, school at the University of Washington, actually, and uh, raced the Intermediate Girls Race, and um, the Nationals got a bronze medal in my first year, so I did have a lot of success right away, and uh, that probably encouraged me to, uh, to keep at it, 
and the next year all I wanted to do was get a little bit better and the next year I got uh, a couple silver medals and then the year after I got a couple gold medals, the nationals, so um, there was a, a pretty much a steady progression all the way until, um, until I won the Worlds, probably uh, at age I guess, 19, I guess. A scary crash in 1986 seemed to mark the beginning of the end of her brilliant career and less than two years later she was finished, or so it seemed. When I retired in 88, I knew that it was going to be and there was a rumor that it was going to be added, uh, but I didn't think that I was going to uh, actually ride it because I was really, really tired of racing. Um, and my, I had had some health problems and so on. So I was, I just really needed a break. And um, but I thought it was probably going to be permanent. But as it, it got closer to '92, and things like uh, I'd wake up one morning and, and Eddie B's phone number was going through my head, and I hadn't talked to him for, you know, called him four years basically. And a couple months later, I just had the urge to get on my bike and. And that happens, you know, you go for a ride, and, you know, you think, oh, I feel really good, I should race. And the next day you're like, oh, I'm really sore, I forget that. <laughs> but the next day, I, I, you know, I still wanted to get out and train again. And so after five days in a row, I still wanted to train. I thought, well, I'm going to actually call Eddie up and see what he does. And I uh, called him up and he said, yeah, you can, you can be as good as you were. But a world record. Here's Rebecca Twid. And she's got it. Her first coach, Eddie Borzevich, once said, this girl has legs of diamonds, and I will polish those diamonds to shine like no other. The legs of diamond are part of a work in progress for the five-time world champion, and her eyes are set on that most precious medal, Olympic gold. Rebecca Twig, the subject of our Fresca profile, and now we look once again at Karen Couric of the Killer Loop team and the rest of the field, not including Rebecca Twig. She has pulled out of the race during this very first lap. A surprising development. Well, not so surprising when we consider, Leslie, that she hasn't been feeling well late this week. That's right. She had a, a small surgery to remove a root and a root canal and had a slight infection after that has been taking antibiotics for the last two weeks. The antibiotics, I'm certain, has slowed her down as well as that infection. And it's hard to stay on the top when you're a, a prime contender like Rebecca is and the media is always concentrating on you. Very, very difficult. So she's in her hometown of Seattle. She had a lot of pressure and an illness. So we will see Rebecca again soon. And here we come up for one of the Evian sprints at the finish of the very first lap, a special competition within the race. There is also the pocket rocket queen of the mountain on the climb. We'll and talk Jeannie, about that a little bit Jeannie more. Jeannie Golay took that sprint very easily. I think she's testing her legs and, and uh, testing that downhill sprint that you see about 300 meters from the top of a slight climb. So she wants to see how that race is going to pan out for that final sprint after six laps. A footnote, of course, to the Rebecca Twig story is that she has not gone away from these Fresca National Championships empty-handed. She won the time trial by over a minute and, and took and the gold here, medal. And here is Didi Demet, an attack up the climb, the first climb here. And uh, she's being shadowed by Karen Kirk of the Killer Loop team. Karen was the silver medalist last year in the 1993 Road Championships and is certainly a contender here today also, a great climber, a great versatile rider. Didi Demet, a former speed skater, a junior world champion a few years ago, great climber, a uh, good sprinter, very versatile rider. And, and now her teammate, Eve Stevenson, going off on a counterattack. And this is a climb up for the Queen of the Mountain, the Queen of the Mountain sprints. And Didi Demet and Eve Stevenson of the U.S. National Cycling Team, the Team EDS here, climbing strongly towards that Queen of the Mountain line where they will be earning points and money as they go along. And it looks as though Didi Demet will be the one to take this first one ahead of her teammate Eve Stevenson. We saw the two of them attack and counter one another during the criteria. And Eve Stevenson indeed wins the Pocket Rocket Queen of the Mountain competition. The rest of the field starting to close the gap on them, and we'll return with more action from the women's race and the finish right after this. You're watching the Fresca U.S. National Cycling Championships on Prime Sports Northwest. Welcome back for the final lap in the Women's National Road Race Championship. Jeannie Golay continuing to set the pace on the climb. And a small number of riders that remain in this race will be the ones who will go to the finish line. And one of them will take home the title of national champion. That's right, Brian. You've got seven riders here. It certainly has been a race of attrition. Every time up this climb, they've lost a few riders. It's 
it's been a small regrouping and back back to a small group again uh, as we come up this climb. So uh, you've got your final riders here. All the key players are climbing together. Easy climbing with Jeannie Belay at the front. Tack with Eve Stevenson. Eve going Stevenson up the road. launches one off of there. Didi Demet riding the wheel of Jeannie Golay and now expecting Golay to do the chasing, and that is exactly what she would want. Now Jeannie Golay has to punch in and go to work. And you can see how they picked the pace up much more quickly with this attack by Eve Stevenson. And Eve's out of the cell again. And there's an attack by her teammate, Didi Demet. These two have a great one-two punch combination. They have used it very effectively in the past. It remains to be seen whether it's going to work for them here in this Fresca U.S. National Championship race. And there's Karen Kirk chasing it down with Jeannie Golay on her wheel. Jeannie's sitting in there. And uh, Jeannie knows that she can't let anything go up the road without her. And Jeannie would like it to come down to a field sprint. Jeannie's been winning some field sprints all over the world. This spring, she was winning a major tour in Holland. She was winning four to five of the field sprints in that race. Jeannie Golay finishing sixth in the Olympics. Here's Didi Demet now. And closing up behind her is Julie Young. So the contenders are all present as we begin to approach the finish line in the last few miles of this 51-mile race. Actually, Brian, that is Allison Dunlap from the Timex team who has a separated shoulder, but she's climbing well, she's sprinting well, and she could be a contender for the final sprint here. At the back, pulling up to the back is Pam Schuster of the Chevrolet LA Sheriff's Racing Team. And there's Pam. She got a small gap at the bottom of a very hairy descent on this course, and you see her right next to beautiful Lake Washington there. She had about a 10 to 15 second gap. She's still off the front here as the riders come up the second climb toward the queen of the mountain sprint. The riders have her just in view. And uh, Pam is a great climber. She's still off the front. She's a trooper. And there goes Didi Demet out of the saddle past Pam. They ride right past the lonely breakaway of Pam Schuster. And with but three miles to go, we've got a brand new race here. The two US national teammates with Julie Young of Saturn sandwiched in between climbing the final climb. Then it's a long screaming downhill towards downtown and the finish line just a couple of miles away. And it looks like these seven riders are going to come to the finish line together. So you're going to have a seven up sprint. And there the finish line is just some 700 yards away. And the cat and mouse game is already being played, even though it's downhill to the finish. Not a lot of speed getting worked on right now. And now the first move of the race on the left side there. And that is Pam Schuster attacking to the line. No, Carmen Richardson sitting back here in fifth spot. And now sweeping in from the right side, Jeannie Golay picks it up. Now she makes her own attack and starts to move with Didi Demet on her wheel. So Jeannie Golay moves to the front as expected. And here she comes on the downhill run. Big, powerful sprint for Jeannie Golay holding everybody off for now. Look at the late rush by Didi Demet in the blue jersey. Didi Demet coming up to the line just a little short. Jeannie Golay with her hand in the air feels like she has won it. Classic sprint for Jeannie Golay. She's a powerhouse. It's her eighth national title, eight times national champion, second time as a national road champion. She's showed her stuff today. There are the rest of the results behind Jeannie Golay, Didi Demet, Carmen Richardson, Allison Dunlap, and Eve Stevenson. And here are the five podium winners of the U.S. National Championship for women. A tremendous performance by the women. More men's racing when we come back. Paging number 37, Gavin Jabbin immediately. Championship men's road race continues. Left turn, left turn, everybody at the bottom of this long descent. Brian Trevor along with Mike McCarthy. And here's a good look at Steve Speaks and a large group of riders that has separated itself from the rest of the field. The attrition is already beginning to take place, Mike. And Brian, the first selection has most definitely been made here. There's a group of about 30 riders off the front. And these guys have really made the commitment to go for it here. You see Jeff Pierce. Jeff is up here really challenging everyone to come with him. I think he wants to cut this group down a little bit as the sprint might not be as fast as some of the other guys there. But there are three Saturn riders in the group. There are three Shapley riders in the group. And we have ourselves a bike race. Jeff Pierce, winner of the final stage in the Tour de France in Paris in 1987. He has had a very, very good season this year already, and he came to this race without the benefit of his Chevrolet LA Sheriff teammates. And so Jeff Pierce, kind of the lone ranger, the lone sheriff out there without a posse. And he is really trying to trim this race right down. He looks back over his shoulder to see what's taking place behind him. 
Coming up, we've got one of the Saturn riders there, and it looks like Shackley, most of the big teams represented as they come to the front. Jeff's a real experienced rider, and, and, and he knows it's not time to go by himself yet, so he wants this group to be with him, and he wants to pare it down to maybe get to more of a working group. 30 guys don't work together very well, and there are definitely guys in there who are just going to sit and stay out of the wind. So I think Jeff's just sort of looking for someone to go with him. That's a good shot of Bob, Bart Bowen right there. And uh, once again, Bart's the monitor for Kevin Livingston. It's the first time we've seen both of Bart's elbows. He's had a very seriously broken elbow, a couple of pins in his right elbow, in fact. And so he's riding bare arm today for the first time in a long time. Yeah, I think Bart's been setting off the metal detectors at airports. He's got two giant pins holding his elbow together and uh, as a result of a crash earlier in the season. And, and right now he's going about 60 miles an hour down this hill. So he can't be real excited about this turn at the bottom right now. This is the return trip on Yesler toward downtown as they head back into the finish line area. Can't emphasize enough how beautiful a day it is here in Seattle, Washington for the Fresca National Championships. Picture postcard weather, beautiful conditions, nice and cool and hot, hot racing. These guys right now are coming down the, oh, this this will be the finish stretch. Uh, it's about a kilometer to the finish out of that turn. And if you look really closely, you can start to see the trees blowing around a little bit up there. It's getting windy, and I think the heat's going to start to take a bit of a toll, too, because even at 70 degrees or, or, or close to that here, it's still a pretty warm day out there, and these guys are doing a lot of work going up and down those hills. Jeff Pierce remains parked on the front. He is certainly the one animating this race, and he has stayed there the whole time to trim the field down to the riders that you see right here. Second spot there, we at his number 216, Chris Yankee. Looking at some of the new Trafig riders, there's a Shackley rider, there's Bart Bowen once again. He has been ever present along with Jeff Pierce. There's, there's also a very sneaky rider in this group, Thurlow Rogers. Thurlow's 34 years old and a veteran of a lot of international racing. Uh, before the race, I talked to him and I asked him how his legs were and he said not too bad, which for Thurlow means they're probably pretty good. Right here's Trent Klasner and Trent's paying a little bit of rent out there right now going for that that sprint crown at the at the finish line here. Trent Klasna, winner of the Criterium Championship held a couple of days ago. Trent paying the rent, as you say, Mike. He is a slid off the front of that big group, and part of the reason why Jeff Pierce is working as hard as he is is not only to trim the field down, but to reel in Klasna, who seems determined to make a name for himself this weekend here in Seattle. Well, this guy's showing a multitude of talent. I mean, he's doing it all. He won the sprint the other day in the Criterium, and now he's riding away from 30 of the best riders in the country. So he's really, really making a name for himself. But once again, if you look at the trees up there, they're blowing around pretty good. So Klassen's got his work cut out for him if he wants to hang out there very long. They head through the finish line area. They'll make the return trip very shortly on Yesler, which is the long, steep uphill heading back out towards Lake Washington, another very exposed part of the race course. With a little bit of breeze blowing. We see Chan McRae has taken up residence there at the tail end of the group. And now we're getting a better look at the young man from Plano, Texas, a uh, high school classmate of Lance Armstrong and a member of the U.S. national team, along with Lance Armstrong, who has since turned pro and gone on, of course, to win a stage in the Tour, the World Professional Championship, and many, many more honors yet to come. For Chan McRae, he's still uh, hanging on uh, in the amateur ranks right now, and well, he'll make his move up to the pro ranks, I'm sure, right behind Lance Armstrong. Well, he was sort of Lance's co-captain there in, uh, a couple of years ago when Lance was still an amateur on the national team, along with Darren Baker. And he knows how to race his bike, and, and he knows that, that he's got to get over Yesler a few more times yet before he can really race. Looking at the back of the field again, and this whole large group, again, about 30 riders that have escaped. Up ahead is Trent Klasna, with Jeff Pierce starting to uh, set the pace. We saw him earlier, and now, once again, the attacks continue. You said it, Brian. Jeff Pierce is out here on a mission. He's just, I mean, he's taken Klasna just by the reins, brought him back in, and now he's breaking everybody's legs out there. Pierce, with all his experience at 32 or 33 years old, is really showing these guys what he's made of. Shackley is represented now with his front trio by Peter Steubenrock, another professional. He's out of Boulder, Colorado, and one by one with Jeff Pierce continuing to animate the action. The other riders recognize that uh, things are not going to slow down anytime soon. They better make sure they keep Jeff Pierce in sight. Probably not. And I look for some of the big guns to start playing their cards pretty soon here. Uh, Livingston and Bowen from Saturn. Uh, maybe Jeff Pierce or Thurlow Rogers out of the, the, you know, the old guard. Uh, Esteban Fraga from Shackley for sure. And maybe Steve Speaks from Guiltless Gourmet. Just some of the names, many of them professionals. And of course, we again remind you that the first placed amateur rider will be the one who will take the jersey of the U.S. National Amateur Champion. The U.S. Professional Champion has already been named this season. That is Steve Haig. 
of the Chevrolet LA Sheriff team who finished fifth but was the first American at the Core States US Pro Championship in Philadelphia. Which is the same sort of scenario we could be looking for today. It's not necessarily the first man across the line that's going to win the title. It's the first amateur. So there are most definitely two races going on here. And out of this front group, two of the more prominent amateurs are Chan McRae, who we just got a good look at before, and also Livingston of the Saturn team. We'll be watching for him. He's in this group. Well, Kevin Livingston, like I said before, just came back from the Tour Austria, and he won one of the hardest mountaintop stage finishes during the Tour. So he looks to be on pretty good form. In fact, that stage, he won by over a minute. So uh, we'll look for Kevin to try to do something up Gessler one of these times, and, and for sure he'll be in the front at the end. The tail end of the field here and a beautiful scenic view. There's Mount Rainier off in the distance. It's not often that Mount Rainier can be seen on a clear day. You can see forever here in Seattle. And it's, it's been a whole day of dry racing too today, Brian. <laughs> yeah, Friday afternoon for the Criterium Championship by the time the men's race finished. Some of that familiar Seattle rain had fallen. Here is Scott Mercier who won the King of the Mountain title in the Tour DuPont a couple of years ago. And this time uh, around, it was his teammate Brian Walton that captured that prize. Mercier, a big guy who climbs extremely well. He's an inspiration to all of us big guys because he sure does go uphill for such a big guy. I mean, look at him next to Pierce there. He's just, just a giant next to Pepe. Peter Steubenrock, again, very active for Team Shackley there. This is the trio on the front. We have seen Jeff Pierce time and time again. Mercier making his first appearance and forcing the pace up the second of the two climbs on this race course. But look at the pressure now that Pierce is putting on Steubenrock and the rest of the group. I mean, this guy is just, he's putting on a show. I, I can't believe that Pierce is out there just trying to break guys' legs like this. He, he must have some kind of plan in mind, but what it's all about, I'm not really sure of. They have a cash prize list for this Fresca US, Pro, U.S. Championships, and I believe it's $1,600 to win. The prize list is very deep. But the prize that most of these guys are going for, the amateurs at least, is that Stars and Stripes jersey and the title of United States National Champion. Well, Jeff looks pretty smooth though going up this hill. I think Jeff Pierce could definitely be in the lead group at the finish of this race. He has formed the lead group, is the one making the action happen. And there are a lot of riders. We started out with 175 riders in this U.S. Championship, 102 miles of racing when we started and now the race is down to only 30 or so and it's unlikely with the kind of pressure that Jeff Pierce is putting on that anyone's going to come up from behind and join this lead group if they aren't already there. There's no way and let's let's not forget that Jeff Pierce is the only American rider to ever win on the Champs-Élysées at the finish of the Tour de France. So that guy is uh, pretty well aware of how to win a bike race. Jeff Pierce, the captain of the LA Sheriff Racing Team. It of course uh, includes now the famous Malcolm Elliott who for many people is the real is the leader of the team but it is Jeff Pierce that captains this squad and he is the uh, the player coach of that team but he has no team here today and he's the lone wolf Peter Steubenrock now with a little counter move Peter's a fine a fine rider in the mountains he's from Colorado so he knows how to ride up these hills too he's been around for a long time he came up with me through the junior program at the Olympic Training Center and the national team so you know, he's another veteran. He's only 25 years old, but he's been racing his bike for 10 or 12 years now. Steubenrock looking around to see what kind of help he's going to get and just who else might come up to continue to set this strong pace. We see the purple jerseys there of the some of the Nutrafig team riders. Thurlow Rogers, who many may feel <laughs> is a professional, but in fact is an amateur rider and eligible for that national title at age 34. There's definitely a bit of a question, I think, between some of the guys out there, you know, as to who's a pro and who's an amateur. Uh, you know, it, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Everyone's out there trying to win the race. And I think when it comes down to the finish, it should be a small group. So guys, guys be pretty well aware of who they're racing against at the end. Jeff Pierce has punched in and gone back to work at the front, apparently uh, dissatisfied with the effort that the others were making. He is the one determined to continue to trim this field down. Beautiful, smooth style for Jeff Pierce. Out of San Diego, California, by way of Livonia, Michigan. Started his career up in the upper Midwest, has moved to Southern California. Jeff Pierce, I think, is a true professional, is doing a lot of justice for the Chevrolet sponsorship today, that's for sure. Well, he's trimmed down to a little group of five now. It's difficult to tell right now how far behind the rest are. And Jeff Pierce, with his effort, has taken the Pocket Rocket King of the Mountain competition. You see McCray tucked in there pretty well, though, and he looks pretty comfortable. He's definitely one of the good guys up there. The men's racing action continues. There's a lot more yet to come. We'll be right here when you come back.
on the descent going into downtown approaching two laps to go in this 102 mile race the fresca national cycling championships continues as we move forward through the field here to show you just who's left at this point in the race there are fewer than there were before brian 85 miles done 17 to go two more times up the nasty yes climb and i think it's time to see some action these guys are getting strung out. The legs are really big, and there's a lot of hurting going on out there. Eddie Gregus at the back there, along with number 199. He was Jason McCartney, one of the four-man breakaway riders from the Criterium Championship. And now we move forward through the field, and clearly there are less than 20 riders remaining in the race at this point. Well, every move is serious now. There aren't very many guys to counter the attacks, and I think we're going to start to see some action happen here. At the front, Team Saturn, their tandem of Bart Bowen and Kevin Livingston. In between them, it is one of the Shackley team riders there. Looks like Steubenrock still present and accounted for, looking over their left shoulders. And here comes Thurlow Rogers. Look at this, right out of the side of the field. We saw him looking left. And Thurlow Rogers, 34 years old, riding for the Nutrafig team, has launched off the front. And he caught the big guns looking at each other. Bart Bowen is looking around. He's got no legs left. Esteban Frager right behind him from the Shackley team. He's not doing anything. And Kevin Livingston just sitting back saying, hey, I'm an amateur. I don't need to chase this. Thurlow's a pro. Although I don't think Kevin Livingston realizes that Thurlow's an amateur or else he might be chasing this breakdown right now. Thurlow's a cagey veteran and this guy knows how to ride the long races. A veteran of many European races. He was a pro with Greg LeMond's Lavie Claire team in the mid-1980s. And Thurlow right now could go to the line with this break. Thurlow Rogers, a teammate of yours too, Mike McCarthy, so you know this guy extremely well. Thurlow and I were together for four years. I spent a lot of time training with him and learning how to race from this guy. And the little intricacies of racing are something that you really can't learn from anyone but a seasoned veteran, and that's certainly what I got from Thurlow. There's Dave Taylor and Scott Ogle, our motorcycle and cameraman. They're following Thurlow Rogers now as he heads towards the finish line. Coming up on the two laps to go mark, Van Nuys, California. This could be our, not only the race winner, but the first place amateur, he could take it all with this move. You know, uh, I, I talked to Steve Penny before the race, the media director for the USCF, and uh, when he asked me who my long shot was, I said, Thurlow, you know, Thurlow Rogers. This guy knows how to ride the races. <laughs> and there's Thurlow off the front once again. As the rest of the field, what's left of it anyway, crosses the line with two laps to go. We'll take a cut away from the action and be right back. to Seattle for the Fresca National Cycling Championships. 34-year-old Thurlow Rogers of the Nutrafig team. His move has now been joined, and he has some friends along for the ride. Bart Bowen and Kevin Livingston of Team Saturn. There is Thurlow right in the middle. Esteban Fraga of Shackley team, and Chan McRae of the United States National Cycling Team are now the five men who it appears will go to the line. This is the bike race, Brian. It's official now, and uh, I, I think when you say Thurlow's got some friends up there, I, I'm not too sure about that. I think he's got a couple of enemies at the moment because these guys are all racing for the big prize now. This is, uh, this is where the big fish is coming. Well, out of these five men, Kevin Livingston and also Chan McRae and, ironically enough, Thurlow Rogers, a reinstated amateur, are the ones who are eligible for the national championship jersey. Fraga is a professional, and so is Bart Bowen. But the Saturn guys appear to be in the driver's seat because they've got two men in this breakaway. I think the driver's seat is the right way to put it, too. And I think you're going to see Bowen doing most of the work up there. He wants to keep Livingston off the front because he's pretty confident that Livingston could beat both Rogers and McRae in the sprint. But I think the guy to look for in the finish is Fraga because he's a real fast sprinter. He was second place behind Trent Klasner in the Criterium the other night, and he's showing really good form right now. Well, he also may be able to take advantage of the cat and mouse going on among the three amateur riders. So we have a very interesting scenario getting set up here with a race within the race. As we mentioned before, the top amateur takes the national championship title. The first man across the finish line, of course, takes the first place prize money. Well, watch Chan McCray to go pretty well before the finish line. He's not known as a sprinter, but he's a real good climber. And I think his only chance to really win the race is going to be to get away from these guys. Him and Kevin Livingston are pretty fast in the sprint. And there goes McCray, just as we said. I mean, Chan McCray just took off from these guys. And there's no response. Bowen trying. And we'll see how long he gets. Well, here we go now. Kevin Livingston and Bart Bowen were the ones caught on the front when Chan McRae went by. So it's up to Bart Bowen if he is indeed working for his teammate Kevin Livingston to make the chase. Chan McRae found a little rise in the course, shifts into a bigger gear and looks back. But the way he's pedaling, Mike, I think he believes that these guys are coming up to him and they've responded. He's got a pretty tough look on his face there. And we got to see what kind of power that Bowen has left in his legs after he just pulled up that whole climb. Uh, we could be looking at the move of the race right here. 
certainly the most aggressive move we've seen so far towards the finish. Jan McRae conceding speed to the other riders in this breakaway group, knows that he has to attack and try to stay away, as you said, Mike. But here they've come up and joined him again. Now there are still climbs left. He's going to have to try one more time, maybe two or three. They're playing a little cat and mouse here, but I'd look for Chan to go again, or possibly one of the other riders. Thurlow maybe not, because he just got caught by these guys, and he's been out there for a little while by himself. And I think Frog is pretty content to sit and wait for the sprint. So these guys will probably roll for a while, and, and I think to look for McRae again. There's Bart Bowen. He is the professional of the two Saturn riders. Number 109 is Kevin Livingston. 20 years of age. And of course, Chan McRae, another one of the young riders, uh, 22 years old, I believe, for the U.S. National Cycling Team. And then Thurlow Rogers represents the, well, the other end of the age spectrum there. A reinstated amateur, a former professional who is now at age 34 looking for yet another national championship title. You know, you go through these races and you watch the little, the little things that guys do. And Thurlow sitting on the back there, a little bit off the back, doesn't have to jump out of the turns. He can carry a little bit more speed through these corners than the other guys because he's not stacked up right behind him. He's doing things to conserve energy, and he's, he's doing things to try to win the bike race right now. I think it, it'll be interesting to see how he plays his cards towards the finish. This is that tricky descent area going out towards Lake Washington. They'll return back, climbing up the King of the Mountain climb, and then back the long descent and a right turn into town for the finish. So there's very little racing left, and a lot of tactics being played out here. These guys. Mike must feel as though no one is going to be able to catch them in order to be sort of fooling around like they are. Well, there's four miles to go to the finish, and believe me, I think Bowen, like I said, is going to do a majority of the work out there to try to set Livingston up. And, uh, and, and you're probably right. I don't think there's very many guys back in the group, with the exception of possibly Pierce and Speaks, who can really do anything to get these guys back. The power is definitely in the front right now. Jeff Pierce doing a lot of work in the race, and that has apparently taken its toll on him. He is no longer among the leaders. For Steve Speaks, well, we're not sure exactly what has taken Steve Speaks out of the race. But here are the five contenders, it appears. Frogger reaching down for his uh, pedal there, perhaps loosening his shoe up just a little bit. And five breakaway companions with one common purpose in mind. That is to get to the finish line, at which point the gloves will come off. And we will decide who the winner of this race will be and who the Fresca U.S. National Champion will be for 1994. More of the race when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. A couple of miles to go in the Fresca National Cycling Championship, the first ever open competition in cycling for a national title. And here is Chan McRae of the U.S. National Cycling Team chugging along here. Esteban Fraga of Shackley, a professional rider, and all the moves and counter moves have started to play themselves out here, Mike McCarthy. It's a race of guts right now. You know, there's there's really not a whole lot of tactics involved. You just look around, you see who's got the, the hurting face on, and you go for it, no matter what. Fraga, I think, is, is sort of testing these guys' legs to see who he's going to have to beat in the sprint. And Livingston and McRae come right back up to him. I think you'll see Livingston try to play McRae in the wind a little bit more than, than, than he will be. Well, they're starting to shake somebody out. There's only three of them there where there once were five. We're seeing Fraga, we're seeing Chan McRae, and we're also seeing Kevin Livingston, but no Bart Bowen, no Thurlow Rogers, at least not for the moment. And the big race here is between McRae and Livingston because they're going for the Stars and Stripes, the last amateur champion in U.S. cycling history. And here is Esteban Fraga just rolling along on the tops of the handlebars. And so there's no way that they're worried about anybody coming up to him, except, of course, well, we see somebody just in the distance back there, probably Thurlow Rogers, maybe Bart Bowen, although Bart's got to be very tired from all the work that he's done on Kevin Livingston's behalf. And now as they head down Yesler once again on this 60-mile-an-hour descent, it's just a couple of turns to go until we see the finish line. Well, Bart Bowen played the role like Jeff Pierce played a little bit early in the race. He pulled for the last two laps just to set Livingston up. Uh, Bart's a professional and Kevin's an amateur, so I think Bart really wanted to see Kevin do well today. It sort of comes back around in cycling. You know, you help the younger guys out in some of the races that they should do well, and, and one day he's going to pay him back for that. So it's, it's you know, it's all, it's all who's going to do something for you down the line. Now Fraga makes another move here, the move to win the race, while Chan McRae and Kevin Livingston watch each other, waiting for somebody to make the move to win the jersey. Fraga doesn't need to make the move. He's just playing with these guys right now. I think he has the best legs. You never saw him at the front of the whole break. And here comes Thurlow Rogers back up to join him while they're fooling around. <laughs> this race is definitely not finished yet. Thurlow takes a look around. I'm surprised he's not attacked straight through these guys. I think they're all playing this cat and mouse now. Bowen's not in the picture yet. 
but Fraga may be going on the left again. No, he's waiting. Look at there, almost coming to a complete stop, and that is what allowed Thurlow Rogers to rejoin. And here goes Chan McCray again. But McCray with the long sprint, trying to take it from a long way out. He knows he probably can't beat Fraga in the sprint. Rogers looks a little tired in the back there, but boy, we got four tired bike riders who want to fight to the finish here. And the question still has to be, do they realize that Thurlow Rogers is one of them? That is one of the amateur riders. And here McCray, Livingston just shadowing him, knows that he can beat Chan McCray in the sprint, apparently. And Esteban Fraga, well, he's not worried about either one because he's going to get a lead out some kind of way. Well, after 102 miles, Brian, we've come down to a match sprint much like we see on the track. These guys are just looking at each other all over the place. They're not too worried about Thurlow now as he's doing everything he can do just to get over this last little rise and this is just cat and mouse right now they're just looking at each other i can't believe nobody's gone yet this is about seven maybe 800 yards to the finish line with that fence down the center of the road that we saw during the women's race and so many laps in this men's race 102 miles of racing is coming down to the last kilometer and this is sweaty palm time for all these guys i mean the hearts are going 100 miles an hour it doesn't matter how bad the legs hurt they got a downhill sprint and it's for all the marbles as soon as they hit that banner it's finished this is gut check time. There's Chan McRae now making another move on Livingston. Thurlow Rogers just rolling along in front of him now. It's a four up match sprint and a very, very difficult way to leave things down to chance. And there goes Chan McRae again. They have to be careful. The, down, the downhill sprint is very dangerous from the front. It's very easy for those riders in the back to come around in the slingshot. You see McRae, he's in a bad position now in my book. He's got Livingston glued to his wheel and Fraga. Livingston's just waiting and waiting. I think he's going to pop around him at the line here. Chan McRae trying to hold him off. Here comes Livingston. Here comes Fraga with the three-back sprint. Oh, boy. And look at Esteban oh, Fraga, baby. who's taking it. Livingston celebrating just as much as Esteban Fraga because he has just won the first-ever Open National Championship title. Let's take another look from the point at which Chan McRae was forced to lead the sprint out if he was going to try to win. You see, you see McRae giving it everything he's got, and Livingston just playing the waiting game on his wheel, going down the hill. But Fraga catches them both looking at each other and just pops around them like they were standing still. Rogers is out of the picture. Fraga wins the bike race, but Livingston wins the jersey. Fantastic action here as Fraga wins in a short period of 50 meters by about a bike and a half. A wonderful competition victory for Esteban Fraga and a title for Kevin Livingston. We'll be back to wrap it all up for you here in Seattle in a moment. It's a deserving one, I would say. Thank you. What uh, What did you do to make this thing happen for you? Well, really, I, I struggled a lot at the start, but like I told the other, you know, those guys were really, um, they had a lot of confidence in me and they helped me out a lot. And um, the course really was pretty, took a lot out of me all day. What about the last uh, the last lap? A little bit of cat and mouse stuff going on out there. We heard, obviously, it would be. Uh, with just you know, your break was gone. Yeah, there was a lot of cat and mouse. And uh, Chad McRae was, I think, one of the biggest starts there. He was riding real strong. He made a few good attacks there. But you know, it wasn't my job to pull with him because I had uh, Bart helping me out. So I just rode him and finish. Pretty good situation for a national championship. I mean, big crowd. Uh, you know, happy faces, a tough selective course. It's kind of a different deal this year. Yeah, it was. It was a real challenging course and um, great city. Uh, yeah, a little bit different. So what are you going to do now? Now, uh, preparation for the Worlds, I hope. Congratulations. Thanks. There are the final standings for the Fresca National Cycling Championship, an historic event here in Seattle, I think you'll agree. Esteban Fraga gets the win. Kevin Livingston gets the title ahead of Chan McRae, Thurlow Rogers, and his teammate Bart Bowen. Yeah, I felt strong today, and um, I wanted a jersey again, but I'll take third place. It's pretty good, you know. And um, I'm just looking forward to the World Championships. The Fresca move of the race for aggressive riding throughout the final lap and for the lead out in the final sprint this award goes to Chan McRae. Voted for his outstanding effort. Came up a little short of winning his second national championship title, but he gets the move of the race, and here it is. Well, you see Chan leading out the sprint. He's given it his best effort. He knows Livingston's just glued to his wheel, so he's going to play a little bit of what we call the razor. Try to ride from the front and hold the guy in the back off, not giving it everything until you get right to the line. Like Brian said, came up a little short, but still a pretty gutsy downhill sprint by Chan McRae. 
And Chan McRae receiving his award for the Fresca move of the race to go along with his placing in this competition. The 1992 U.S. National Champion came up a little short of winning the title here in 1994. That honor instead goes to Kevin Livingston of Team Saturn. I think considering the caliber of the field, though, Brian, Chan's got to feel pretty good about his ride here today. I mean, he shelled some pretty honcho riders. To, you, know, you know, when you put the screws to guys like Bart Bowen and Jeff Pierce, you know you got pretty good legs on. So these guys should look forward to a good world championships this summer and, uh, and some pretty good results down the road this year. World championships in Sicily. And Kevin Livingston, Chan McRae will join forces to try to bring home the gold at the World Cycling Championships, much as their former teammate, Lance Armstrong did one year ago. And I promise you, Kevin Livingston is going to feel pretty good putting that jersey on because that's a good feeling, and this is his first one. He's got to be a happy guy. And for Esteban Fraga, well, perhaps the biggest win of his career. His family originally from Ecuador, but this man has just won the U.S. National Cycling Championship. And he did it the right way. He was a conservative rider. He didn't get out in the wind a whole lot. He didn't do a whole lot of work in the break, but he was the first guy across the line, and no one can dispute that kind of tactics. If you look up professional in the dictionary, you might just see a definition, something <laughs> like what Mike just said. Esteban Fraga, first place on the race. Kevin Livingston, the runner-up in the race, but the national championship titleist. And for Chan McRae, and for Thurlow Rogers, and for Bart Bowen, they rounded out the top five. We should give a tip of the hat, too, to the sixth place finisher, a guy that put on a great ride. We didn't get a chance to see much of it here on this show, but he had a great ride for a, a young fellow. Yeah, Dell Sedgwick from Minnesota sure did put on a good show and got just, you know, within a few meters of Bart Bowen at the finish line and almost wound up on the podium. A guy that nobody really thought much of before the race as far as in, in, figuring in the overall results, but he really did put on a good ride. And congratulations and hats off to him, too. Well, we also have to give our hats off to Todd Starnes and the organizing committee here for the Fresca U.S. National Cycling Championships and to whoever was responsible for the weather. Well, they ought to get a raise. And our thanks also to Steve Penny, who acted as our executive producer, essentially. He is the media director for the Cycling Federation. And it has been a tremendous championship here. History has been made in the streets of Seattle. And we certainly look forward to seeing more of the same in years to come. As we have set the stage now for cycling to be an open competition all the way in to the Olympic Games. We'll be back to cap it all up and wrap it all up for you in just a few moments. The city of Seattle has been a most gracious host for these Fresca U.S. National Cycling Championships. We have certainly enjoyed our stay here and certainly enjoyed one of the most beautiful days anybody can remember in this part of the country for quite a while. Beautiful because we had a great competition, Mike McCarthy, and certainly the weather didn't do anything to harm that. Well, Brian, in all my years of competitive bike racing, I've been to the national championships, I don't know, 14 times or something, and this is by far the best organized and, and some of the best racing I've ever seen at the nationals. The course was fantastic, really selective. The guys put on a good show, and the crowd had a great time, and we didn't get a drop of rain in Seattle. The crowd indeed had a great time, and a very nice crowd gathered to watch these men as they now celebrate their co-victory. Esteban Fraga on the right, first across the finish line, takes the victor's spoils, and Kevin Livingston takes the Stars and Stripes jersey of the U.S. national champion. You know, we'd also like to add our congratulations to the women's champion, Jeannie Golay, and to the women's criterium champion, Karen Bliss. And of course to Trent Klasna, who won the criterium for men, and to Leif Harnden, who took the title for the men in the amateur ranks. You can't help but think back to the early days of the core states race in Philadelphia when you saw the crowds around this course today, up the Yesler climb and down the other side, all the way around along the lake. I mean, this is really reminiscent of the early days of, of the pro championship, which has become such a success now in Philadelphia. Uh, you really couldn't have asked for a whole lot more here. And I, I was uh, pretty happy to be in the van watching it with you today, Brian, and not being out there battling up the hill. <laughs> I would have to say I would rather be here than climbing Yesler Hill too, but it certainly created a very selective course and a deserving champion in both Esteban Fraga and in Kevin Livingston. And a crowd, well, that may look forward to this event being held here in future years. The intention, as we understand it, 
is instead of having a traveling championship to build a tradition and perhaps that tradition will be built right here in the city of Seattle. And I, I think we've shown the potential for a great future with the unified championship now racing the pros and the amateurs together. It's a great step for cycling um, as as a member of both the pro and amateur cycling ranks. You know I, I see it as a definite plus and a step in the right direction. So it's 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 definitely a bonus for us and uh, I think if we come back here we're going to see twice as many people out there and probably even better racing action. Of course the world cycling championships will be open in 1995 and the Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia will be also open. That is, amateurs and professionals will race for a single Olympic title on the road and on the track. And These men have begun a little bit of history here today in Seattle. The first time an open championship has ever been held. I would like to extend my thanks also to my broadcast partners, to Leslie Shank, who was so helpful, a double medalist in world championship competitions, our expert commentator, for the women's competition. To our producer and director, Jim McDonald, and of course, my colleague here in the booth for this men's championship, world professional pursuit champion, Mike McCarthy. We hope you enjoyed the fresh